Okay, I've had some interest in my steam generator here, so I thought I'd do a little walkthrough. This whole setup is basically some black pipe. I'll take this cover off here. Alright, so we've got a T. We've got a section here that's about 12 inches long with a bell housing on the end and a, uh, a nipple to take a piece of pipe on the end and this is like radiator hose type pipe. And then we've got approximately a, uh, you know, a six inch section down here and another bell housing that um, takes a turn. I guess it's called a street fitting. But I'm not 100% sure on that because I'm not. A the only reason for this configuration is just to, to make it turn 90 degrees. So over here, I've got a, uh, a bushing down on this end, and then this is uh, just a, a hot water heater coil. So this one is uh, 110 volt. And then, of course, it's just going to a, a standard switch, and I've got the ground. A wire just connected up via this hose clamp to the pipe itself. And uh, so the coil is sitting down horizontally and the reason for that is because I found um, I used to use it with the coil mounted vertically but if you didn't if any of that coil got exposed uh, to air without having water all around it it would burn out really quickly. And so this was a simple way to sort of make sure it stays immersed. I also found when it was running up, when you had it going this way, you had to have a good amount of pipe here to keep water from boiling out the top. And if you, if you have too much water in your reservoir, it'll still tend to boil out to a certain degree. So if I spin this around, this is basically a two banger unit. So this, this guy in here is a larger version. So I've gone up to a three inch pipe on this one and I've got a uh, 240 volt hot water heater coil in there. And um, the reason for going up to a larger pipe size is I was just trying to generate more steam. And so the uh, production of steam is a bit of a function of the surface area. So this is just a way to quickly increase the surface area. If you make it too much, then it takes too long for this, for this thing to get up to steam. So I found this is a good compromise. This thing is up and rolling in about five minutes time. So coming around, this is my water reservoir here, and it's just a it's just a pail. And on the bottom of it, I've got a little uh, little elbow, um, with a nipple on there that's that's threaded on the inside of the washer, and there's a, a cork washer on there. And then of course, this is basically a little manifold I've created. So this is a one-way check valve because I have found. At times, um, when this thing gets it starts getting good and hot, sometimes it'll reverse the current, and you'll start getting hot water wanting to come up into your reservoir as opposed to coming out your your pipe. And so, the check valve uh, is the solution to that. And then these things, just to keep everything flexible, are just connected with little pieces of the same sort of radiator pipe. So this is really the same thing over here that we have on the other side. You'll see here I had to go down uh, to three different bushings until I got to one that was sized to fit this, um, this coil. Now the one thing I'll mention is if you talk to a guy at a plumbing store and you tell him you want a bushing that will fit a hot water heater coil, they'll tell you to get lost that the uh, hot water heater coil is a different thread than these national pipe threads and that while that's true I have found that they are close enough that it will match up and to the point at least that the rubber washer on the hot water heater coil will compress and, and seal it up tightly so we're not relying on the threads of the um, of the fitting here to provide to provide a watertight seal like you are with the pipe and uh, don't forget you should always wrap uh, Teflon tape around these threads here or use pipe dope. Uh, we're relying on the, on the rubber washer to do that job. I keep this bucket just sitting on a little stand here, elevated. And the goal is to try and maintain water level above here, of course. And then um, 
I've got it just attached to the bungee cord. That, this is partially just to allow this to dump. I'm, I, if I, I could put a valve on there, I suppose, and make the job simpler, but this is a bit of a Frankenstein affair that's, you know, one idea that's morphed into another. Here I've got a little, um, you know, plumbing shutoff valve, and this is just to drain the whole system while I'm, when I'm not using it. If you, if you leave water in this, you get a lot of iron oxide building up in the water, and depending on what kind of wood you're working with, that can actually stain the wood. So you do need to be careful to put fresh uh, water in there and try and I actually will tip this on its side and try and blow out all the junk. So up here I have roughly a one inch hose and I find I've got these PVC pipe fittings here um, that I just slip on over top and these are really nice for connecting up to your steam box because you can just, you know, blast like an inch and a half hole in your steam box and then these articulate to sort of plug it in there and whatever configuration you need it to. And I can always add another section of pipe onto this without farting around with hose clamps and things. Now what I have found, if you try and use too much hose, that can be a problem and uh, it can cause a lot, too much resistance. And um, the shorter the better is what it really boils down to. Now as it stands, this little affair is really kind of big and awkward. And um, I really need to do something to refine it earlier. So I keep these little uh, wooden boxes just on here primarily to cover up the electrics so that uh, nobody's getting shocked by accident. Just got this little guy for winding up my cables on too. And I always keep a set of barbecue tongs on there for fishing hot stuff out of the box. And I've found this setup, at least with the, the 220 rig up, uh, I can easily heat up a 16 foot long box, um, depending on weather. If it's winter time, it gets harder to get it really up to a good head of steam. So you, you really want to reduce, the bigger the box you have, the longer the box you have, the, the more you want to try and reduce its interior dimensions down to sort of the bare minimum. Uh, but the box I use now is about 6 inches tall and about 12 inches wide, 16 feet long. I can get that up to a pretty good head of steam if it isn't too cold. Or if you bring it inside, not a problem. Um, and of course, smaller than, smaller boxes are easy enough. The one, if I'm really kind of hurting for juice, what I'll do is I'll actually fire up both units and I'll get, um, I'll get both boilers going and that just gives me that much more steam. A propane burner, um, you know, be it an old gas can or, or going with a, uh, you know, a, a turkey fryer is, is another option, but I've found that you really blow through an awful lot of propane running one of those things, and it still takes quite a while to get them up to steam, and of course there's the danger of having open flame. So I've found for my purposes, uh, this has been a far, far superior way to go and uh, I've gotten a lot of years out of these things. It probably runs you, if you're buying your plumbing parts retail, you're probably going to spend about a hundred bucks once you factor in the coil uh, to, put a, to put one of these together, at least one side. Um, but it's, that's a pretty reasonable amount and it's going to last you a long time. You, you do, I do recommend you keep an extra coil on hand just in case you, you do burn it out and you're in the middle of a project, you want to get it done.